When I watch YouTube videos, I really want to watch something that tangibly improves the quality of my life. But I don't feel like the YouTube algorithm really agrees. It tends to recommend videos that are a bit kind of clickbaity or quite superficial that for some reason, you know, you'll just find yourself watching, but actually you kind of finish watching the video and you're like, you know, did I really learn a lot from that? Is that, is that really what I wanted to spend like the last 10 minutes of my life doing? So I decided to create my own YouTube algorithm, which I could use to find the videos that I wanted to watch. And hopefully these would be better videos than the one that the YouTube algorithm recommended. So uh, let's see, I'll show you the project and uh, you, can, you can be the judge for yourself. So I started by looking at what sort of metrics can I get about these videos on YouTube. And specifically, I knew I was gonna to have to use the YouTube API. If you're not familiar with the term API, it stands for Application Program Interface. And it's basically the contact point between your code and some sort of server that has some information. So in this case, there's a YouTube API. I write some code, it goes to the YouTube API and it says, tell me this feature of this video, and then the API will send that back. So I looked through the YouTube API and I looked what sort of information can I get about these videos. And the sorts of information they gave were the number of views the video got, the number of subscribers, the number of comments on the videos, the number of likes, the date that it was published, the thumbnail image, and all these other different factors of the videos. So I kind of asked myself, you know, what what of these uh, variables, what of these features about the YouTube videos would be interesting and could I use to make my own kind of ranking system? To start with, I just used view counts as a very kind of rough metric. I just wanted to test, you know, what would this look like? Would it work? How, uh, kind of get the infrastructure in place. And by itself, obviously, view count is not gonna be a super reliable metric because you have clickbait videos. And also, um, you know, just because a video is popular, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually a good video. It could also be that the YouTube algorithm recommended that this video get watched and then it got lots of views and I'm kind of trying to get away from the YouTube algorithm. So I didn't want to just use view count, but to begin with, that's what I looked at. Um, when I looked at the results, I found that there was a bias towards channels with a lot of subscribers. So for example, a channel that has like a million subscribers or, or more than a million, it's gonna be pretty easy for them to get a lot of views because a lot of their subscribers are just gonna watch that video. It's not necessarily like a marker that that's a uniquely interesting video for me to watch. So then I asked myself what sort of metrics could be useful to discriminate between the high view videos. and Looking at all the different metrics that were available, the next one I decided to introduce into my formula was the subscriber count. So I looked at view count divided by subscriber counts. And the rationale here was that if you have a video that has, let's say 100,000 views, if that's coming from a channel with 1 million subscribers, that's much less impressive than 100,000 views from a 10,000 subscriber video. So I would think that the 10,000 the, the 10, subscriber video is much more likely to be kind of valuable and interesting, and therefore I wanna be ranking that higher in my YouTube algorithm. So that's what I wrote. I wrote this kind of ratio that therefore, uh, the more views you have per the number of subscribers, you'll automatically get bumped up. And then I ran that, um, I kind of tested it, I had a look and it did look like it was getting some pretty decent videos. Um, it was making some interesting suggestions, but there were a couple of problems that I noticed. The first problem was that videos where there were very few subscribers would get a really high score. Because if a channel, let's say had only like six subscribers and then it had a video with 5,000 views, then that ratio, 5,000 divided by six, goes absolutely huge. And any channel with even 10,000 subscribers couldn't really compete with that. So I wanted to change that. And the way that I did that was I kind of set like a bottom limit. So if a channel has less than 5,000 subs, I just put it up to 5,000. Um, so that kind of like balanced that out, that it would never get divided by a really small number. And the other thing I just did to help with this is I set the ratio of views to subscribers at a maximum of five. So if there was a channel with 10,000 subscribers and a million views, that would still only get capped at five in terms of the, the kind of ratio there. Um, so then I incorporate that into my metric and again, kind of ran it, had a look and yeah, it was, it was doing pretty good. Um, they got some really interesting videos uh, and I'll probably show some up on the screen here just kind of to demonstrate. But when I looked through these results, I noted one other thing, which was that videos that have been published like six days ago would have a much better chance than videos that have been published only one day ago. So I kind of looked to correct that because the way that I wanted to run the algorithm is I wanted to just run once a week, every week, to then look back at the last week highlight what the best videos are on a particular subject and then just recommend those. So it's running in a seven day window. And obviously if a video was uploaded six days ago, it had a lot longer time to get a really high sub, uh, view counts. Whereas the subscriber count is not really gonna have changed much in that time. Whereas a video that was published like one day ago, it's kind of like much harder for it to get to that sort of number. So the algorithm, when it was ranking videos, it would typically rank some from like seven, six, five days ago and not many from one, two, three days ago. So then I put that into the metric as well and I added it as a division. So now it was the view count times by the view to subscriber ratio divided by the number of days since it was published. So therefore it's kind of a scaling thing. So it says for every day, how many extra views did it get divided by the number of subscribers, etc. 
So I was now getting pretty confident about my tool. Pretty much every time I'd run it, it would come up with some really good suggestions. And I was pretty happy that I was screening out crappy videos and I was only getting good ones. So I set it up so that it would run. It would find like the top five videos for particular search terms. And then I could look at those five videos. I could look at the description of them uh, and basically decide what I wanted to watch. So I did a few trial runs. I tried on medical school um, because I used to be at medical school and I was interested in seeing what sort of things have been talked about. And yeah, and I found some, found some pretty interesting videos. Like I found uh, this video here, which was a great video and I'd highly recommend watching it. And then tried also for productivity. And again, came up with some pretty good videos, watched those, quite enjoyed them. Uh, and yeah, I, I just tried like various other things. That was uh, at the time, so GPT-3, which is for those not familiar, it's like this big neural network that was released by a company Elon Musk is involved with that got a lot of excitement and it was kind of like it writes poetry and stories and stuff like that. So I kind of wanted to see, you know, what sort of interesting fresh videos were on that subject. So I used my new YouTube algorithm and I put GPT-3 in as a search term and I got a pretty interesting video from this like YouTube with maybe like three or 4,000 subscribers. Uh, and I watched that and it was pretty interesting, pretty entertaining. And if I then tried to go through YouTube and look down the feed, if I searched for GPT-3, this video wouldn't come up until like the 31st position. So my algorithm was bypassing all these videos that were coming from big channels and it was showing me ones that were uh, kind of from like smaller channels, a bit more like fresh, organic YouTuber type channels, uh, which, you know, th there's nothing wrong with big channels. I'm, I'm not trying to hate on, uh, you know, channels with big size. I think in, in general, that probably means that they're, they're making good videos. But um, sometimes it's nice just to see what some of the other kind of perspectives are or some, some of the like takes from smaller YouTubes and see what the sort of things they're doing. But all in all, after testing this, I was pretty happy with myself. I had now an algorithm which basically every week I would run it, it would find the videos, it would rank them in top five, it would print those out as a message. I could then copy them, look through them, decide what videos I wanted to watch for the week. I would then save them all to a playlist on my YouTube accounts. And then just throughout the week, whenever I had free moments, I'd get up my phone or maybe on the computer and just go on that playlist and just watch those videos. And as long as I could avoid the temptation of clicking on any of the other recommendations on the side, then this streamlined my process. And the last few months when I've been trying it, I found it's worked pretty well. It's made me pretty, pretty efficient and quite productive. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. And I found it was like a pretty helpful project to work on. On the subject of also avoiding YouTube recommendations, there is a great extension. Uh, I can't remember its name, but I'll put it on the screen, which basically stops like recommendations appearing on your YouTube screen on your computer. And that's actually pretty helpful as well because that will just stop recommending any other videos. So I can just watch the videos that have been recommended by my algorithm and then there, just stop it there basically. So all in all, this was a pretty fun project. It's not like an absolute game changer. It's not really changed my life drastically, but it's given me probably incremental gains in terms of how I watch YouTube videos. Uh, it's not the case that I never go through youtube.com now and like search that search bar. Sometimes it's just a lot easier to do that. But I think it has minimized the amount of time that I kind of spent wasting, wasting my time or just watching slightly random YouTube videos that are kind of interesting, but not that like relevant to me or, or not, you know, not really like valuable things to be spending your time on. Uh, so all in all, it was a pretty fun project. If you're interested in the code, then that's all on GitHub. And I've also written a kind of long form blog post, which explains this all in a bit more detail and has some of the code uh, snippets and explanations as well. So feel free to check those out. I'll put them on the screen here and I'll leave links in the description below. I'll be interested to hear what you guys think about the project. Do you think it's as useful? Is this something that you would be interested in using? Uh, leave some comments below. If, if it is something, I can kind of make it a bit more accessible. At the moment, it's probably quite hard to use if you're not a developer by background. But if this is something that would be interesting just in more, in general, I could make like a front uh, front facing web page that people could use and just search with terms and then it would get the results. But yeah, that was the project. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. So I feel a little bit like the YouTube algorithm and me are in a bit of an abusive relationship, to be honest, because she keeps on recommending me these videos and I'll watch them just because she tells me to. Uh, but I don't know if it's really best for me. You know, I, I think maybe I need to find my own YouTube algorithm.